She was out cold when we first found her. A little plug that we give away a free game to the subscriber most active each month, as well as one lucky patron. Be sure to subscribe and hit that little notification bell. Hi guys, and welcome back to Switch Up. A big thanks to Banana, aka Will, for his review of Sparklight. Stop me if this sounds familiar. The world's in peril, and you along with your trusted wrench must bring peace to it. No, unfortunately they didn't remake 2003's classic Freedom Fighters, but I can only hope. Developer Red Blue Games have instead great us with Sparklight, a Zelda-esque roguelike sneaking its way onto the Nintendo Switch. With all the retro trappings and whimsical score to boot, is this just another homage or an adventure you need to take? Let's find, find out. Again, and we will help you. The story of Sparklight is not wholly a unique one. The land of Geodia has fallen on hard times. The once prosperous land has been taken over by the evil Baron who seeks to control the world's supply of Sparklight, the mysterious energy source that inhabitants have harnessed to power their day-to-day -day lives. Using his wealth and influence, the Baron continues to drain the land in order to fuel his diabolical contraptions as well as his own ego as he seeks to rule the world. Our young plucky heroine, Ada, is introduced to us aboard an ill-fated airship moments before it crashes back to the ground. Once awakened from her medically necessary slumber, Ada is quickly alerted to the strange occurrences that have been befalling Geodia. The Baron's lust for power, however, has polluted the world, turning the normally docile creatures into fearsome abominations, as well as fracturing what remains of Geodia through a series of quakes that threaten to destroy the land once and for all. You, as Ada, must gather as much Sparklight as you can in order to amass the arsenal of weapons and gadgets necessary to defeat the Baron and Legion of Titans that now rule over the world. Gameplay-wise, Sparklight is not ashamed to show its retro Zelda inspirations. Everything from the top-down camera to the simplistic combat helps evoke the feelings of nostalgia. Ada begins her adventure fairly underpowered and only able to use her wrench to defend against the enemies that have overtaken the land. A quick attack and dash for defense and traversal are your always ready means of survival. Quickly, Ada finds the ancient weapons referred to here as gadgets that are strewn about the land, hidden in secret dungeons and just waiting to be discovered. Once these gadgets, such as the boom balloon and rocket boots, have been found, Ada must traverse the dungeon, solving its never too challenging puzzles in order to return to the overworld. The new gadget is then saved as a schematic which Ada can build when she dies and is back at the refuge the name for the hub world. And trust me on this one, you're gonna die a lot. Being a roguelike game, the inherent game design means that it's more a matter of when rather than if, but thankfully each time you're gonna get stronger. This also shows the player the hook which has become ever popular and increasingly more divisive, a procedurally generated world. Each death has Ada plucked from Geodia by an arcade machine claw as you helplessly watch as all of the power-ups known as widgets fall back to terra firma. Once Ada is ready to battle some more, she returns to this place where she'll find that the land has changed and so have the tools you need to accomplish your mission. The satisfying game loop of dropping into the world to gather sparklight, hunt for widgets and schematics and tackle titans is very rewarding as you watch your base of operations grow, similar to how the Bastion is expanded upon and comes to life in that title. Upgrading within the world is an exercise in patience and persistence. Located in the med lab, you'll be spending a fair amount of your time, as here Ada has the ability to purchase health, damage and defensive upgrades. The twist though is that everything is handled through a block grid system. Each power up is represented by a square or rectangle and must fit into the grid. Upgrading the facility allows you to stack power ups, thus reducing your overall footprint on it and making for some difficult choices, depending on what you seek to accomplish during your next run. Controlling Ada felt familiar. The simple yet slick control scheme allows for for easy pick up and play fun but has enough wrinkles for hardened adventurers to find something rewarding here. Ada has her basic swipe attack with her wrench which will provide the majority of your offensive prowess through the five unique biomes each with its own enemies to learn. The gadgets you discover on your journey also add a perk that will help Ada unlock new areas previously unreachable. I mentioned the rocket boots which will grant Ada the ability to hop up onto ledges where she previously just had to stare in wonder at the contents held within. Thumbstick controls all your movements with the right stick only coming into play when Spark Slinger slingshot, 
is equipped. Your first gadget. The face buttons are mapped to activate one of the two available gadgets, while Y handles your basic attack and A dash. The dash mechanic works not only as a means of escape, but also helps Ada traverse the gaps created by the constant seismic activity throughout the game. Being a Nintendo Switch title, the developers did not miss the opportunity to utilize some of the added features that come with the hardware. When you're in the med lab, for example, working on your upgrades, the touch screen has been utilized to effortlessly allow the player to move their power-up patches. Unfortunately, there was no utilization of the motion controls, which I know may bring a tear to our narrator's eye. You know me so well. But its lack of inclusion here is truly not noteworthy. The screen borders, however, are something that needs your attention. Those familiar with the single screen adventures know that the four sides scroll when you walk into them, transitioning the screen in a sliding motion. Sparklight follows this same structure, but the world well design does everything in its power to thwart your progress in certain iterations of its procedural generation. Ada may have to carefully walk around a structure that may force her to slightly clip the bottom or side of the the screen. In these instances, the entire scene shifts to the new one. Thankfully, the enemies do not respawn, so this becomes more of an annoyance than an actual issue. The combat itself, while simple by design, never feels as nuanced as something in the vein of A Link to the Past or the recently released indie sleeper Shalnor Legends. While certainly not a light hack and slash affair, Sparklight doesn't bring a vast stable of new weaponry or gadgets to really impact the overall gameplay or control. Swing, swing, swing. Power attack, rinse and repeat. The dungeons break up this gameplay and offer the player an opportunity to use more of these gadgets. Not dissimilar to games of the same ilk, Sparklight's array of these and its procedural generation mean each encounter, bosses included, will be unique, as you're not guaranteed to find the same widgets in each run. A door may be sealed and the switch across a seemingly endless pit. What do you do? Well, in Geodia, you unleash your remote-controlled air balloon, of course. Guiding your helium death trap felt like I was transported back to the RC Pro-Am days of yesteryear. Little touches like this would have gone a long way had they found more implementation throughout the overworld. Early in your adventure, Ada reunites with Wingnut, the little robot that walked her through the opening tutorial, which acts as an assistive co-op of sorts. And while I applaud the inclusion of it, it didn't add a great deal to the experience. Still, it's nice to have. Gameplay scores 17 out of 20, and the controls 17 out of 20. While Ada's adventure may be a grim one, you know the whole greedy, industrialist world in peril thing, the world she inhabits is quite the opposite. Each of the five unique biomes has been meticulously crafted with some stellar pixel art. The world, while being drained of its power source, remains vibrant and bursting with colour. If you picture a game like Moonlighter, you're not going to be too far from the beautiful style they've gone for. Flowers dance rhythmically as Ada does her best to channel Anna Pavlova. Yep, Russian dance history found its way into a review as she glides effortlessly across the screen. The three-man team at Red Blue Games deserves a lot of credit for creating a world that while unique and foreign, remains familiar and comfortable to explore. The monster design for the enemy combatants, while not world-stoppingly amazing, do serve their purpose. The titans who serve as the bosses under the Baron are the eye candy for the game. Harkening back to the glory days, Sparklight ramps up the challenge and the visuals with each of its iterations. Ranging from Boris the Miner, who looks to be ripped straight from the last Sonic the Hedgehog game, complete with a pendulum drill that swings side to side, to Timbert the mechanical buzzsaw wielding lumberjack. These titans literally fill the screen with chunky pixel madness as Ada must quickly learn patterns and find a way to lay waste to the mechanized menaces before they ruin her land. The dungeons, while not overly imposing at first glance, do have a foreboding feel as Ada slowly dispatches the enemies and makes her way further into their depths. Unfortunately though, all that glitters isn't gold when it comes to the performance, when docked, Sparklight offers a buttery smooth experience, with only a slight frame rate dip when the action gets frantic. Handheld, not quite the same. Ada appears to skip frames from time to time as it struggles 
controls to keep up with the on-screen action. Areas of higher density see it slow to a crawl. Everything remains playable and this hiccup could possibly be patched out by the time you hear this review, but it's most certainly going to affect the score. In terms of the audio, Dale North of Wizard of Legend fame returns with a whimsical and charming score. While dispatching foes across Geodia, the overall sound design does a good job of capturing the spirit of its inhabitants. The score effectively ebbs and flows as the on-screen action unfolds. What I would say is that uh, there's a certain hollowness to the melee combat sounds that doesn't leave the player with any sense of weight behind it. Blows impact their target but are not met with any oomph to signify it. The same can be said for Ada herself. Oftentimes I would receive damage but have no idea I'd been hit. The lack of an audio cue detracts from the immersion as I found myself having to keep an eye on my health meter more than I should have done during battles. For me, those lovely visuals score 17 out of 20, and the audio is not quite as good, it scores 14 out of 20. Arriving on the Nintendo Switch, Sparklight will cost you £16.99, €19.99 or $24.99, which seems very good value for the game offered. Given that the title already has a 15% discount at launch, it's the perfect opportunity to lose yourself in a new adventure, brimming with nostalgia and mystery. There's a decent amount of content here as Ada battles to unlock the seals and defeat the evil Baron. Add in the scattered side quests given to you by locals, and what we have is a fairly fleshed out action RPG. Value scores 17 out of 20. She was out cold when we first found her. She needed our help. We needed her. Sparklight has the heart so sorely missing from many of the run of the mill Zelda clones. The wonderfully done pixel art certainly won't win all detractors over to the style, but they do convey the feelings of gaming's bygone era while updating many of the effects that wouldn't have been possible. The wonderful soundtrack is only let down by the lack of punch from the sound effects. Ada's journey is one that is not only worth taking, but one gamers looking for more after the remake of Link's Awakening should undertake. It scores an overall switch up score of 82%. Thanks so much to Banana aka Will for writing this review. Let us know down in the comments what you thought and give him some love. A big thanks to our patrons who support the channel each and every month. If you want to join them, the links will all be down in the description. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya! Sparklight follows this same structure, but the world design does everything in its power to thwart your progress. Sparklight follows this same structure, but the world design does everything in its. Oh, for.